All right, here we go. Another episode of Steve Lags Unfiltered. And this year, I'm going to be talking about a particular leadership concept. And this is a challenge that a lot of you leaders are having. And I'm going to teach you guys and guide you how to overcome this. And the answers are not going to be what you think. So here's the challenge. Leaders that are having an issue where they have higher expectations for the performance of a team member than that team member might have for themselves. Let's go. And now, introducing your host, Steve Lags. Okay, so number one, if you're a leader and you think that the problem right now, or the challenge, I should say, the opportunity is that you have higher expectations for the person that you lead than they have for themselves, I would just suggest right at the beginning, don't take it at face value because it might be more to it than you actually realize. And in order to effectively overcome this challenge where you're frustrated, you know, you're getting some resistance from somebody where you're uh, coaching them and on giving them some great feedback on how to get better and it's just not being received well and you walk out of that meeting and you're like, man, maybe they just don't expect that as much out of themselves as I do out of them. I see a lot more potential. I'm going to show you how you overcome that, okay? Now, first thing is there's four key components that you have to establish as a leader They're a prerequisite to be able to work through a situation like this or, frankly, most leadership challenges that you're going to be able to come into. The first one is being a visionary leader. Now, it is super important to be a visionary leader. Now, when we traditionally think about being a visionary and a leader, we think about, okay, the company, what's the vision of the company? Where is that company going in, you know, in five years from now, 10 years from now? What's that look like that? Where, where are we taking this? Like, what's the big vision of the organization? And how do, uh, how do the, as everybody see themselves coming along for that ride? Or within a department, you know, what's the vision of this department? Where we are now and where are we going to take this particular department that I'm leading in another five, 10 years from now? And how amazing it's going to look when we uh, accomplish all these goals and then grow it and developing it. Which, but what's really important as a leader is also to be able to have, be the visionary of the people that you lead. And what I mean by that is in addition to what we just mentioned, the company, the department, you've also got to see the greater vision within the greatness that lies within the people you lead. Like five years from now, 10 years from now, what could that gr- bigger picture look like for that person? You've got to have a belief and and the ability to see the greatness in the people you lead. And I can promise you there's greatness in everybody that you lead. But if you're not able to see that in them, it is going to be extremely difficult for you as a leader. You're not going to be able to be as effective. And I will tell you, number one, if you have low belief in yourself or low belief in general, if you have low confidence as a leader, It is going to be really super challenging for you to see that in other people because to the level that you believe, you'll believe in others because you're not going to believe more in other people than you believe in yourself. So you, as a leader, it's important for us to develop our belief, our self-confidence, you know, do things that are really hard and overcome them and accomplish them. So we raise our confidence and we can see a greater picture of not only ourselves, but the people that we lead. The second part is earning the trust and respect of the people that you lead. In order to be an effective leader, you've got to earn the trust and respect of the people that you lead. And the key word here is you earn it. You don't command it. You're not entitled to it. Just because you have a job title does not give you trust and respect. Now, how do you earn trust first? You earn trust by doing what you say and saying what you do. You've got to, your word has to mean something and then people will learn to trust you. You've got to have a credible uh, track record of accomplishing things where they, that now you've got credibility, you have expertise, you've done it before, you've been the example, you continue to be the example. And it's not just you've done it once or twice. It's something that you've consistently, a pattern, a trend over a long period of time that you've established that you're consistently showing up and providing results. Uh, and so when someone new comes in, you have a track record of history. Okay, they might get, they might have some awareness of this. If you're on social media, you might get a little head start because you've been transparent with your life. And they've maybe, if, they've, if they're smart, they took a look into it 
and, and research a little bit. And then they can see some, okay, well, I learn a little bit more about them. I now I trust them. Uh, if you, the more that someone knows you, the more they trust you, the less you share about yourself, the less they're going to trust you. If so, if I'm a leader and I'm like, Hey, this is my personal life. I'm not sharing this. I'm, I'm very like private and everything It is going to be a lot harder for people to trust you because they don't know as much about you. But when you just open it up, because I'm very proud of the life I'm living, it's something that should be celebrated. It's it's a great example. It's something that I want to share with you because I want more people to know me. Uh, then they're going to really uh, be able to trust you a lot faster than if you're, if you're not. And how do people respect you? Look, you, you earn respect by doing what you say same way as you earn trust. They're going to respect you when you have credibility. They're going to respect you when you're showing up consistently. They're going to respect you when they see you doing things that you don't want to do, but you know it needs to be done in order to get the results. Because look, if everybody just does everything they want to do all the time, we're never going to really accomplish our goals because what goal that's really challenged has been accomplished by only doing the things that you want to do. <laughs> the whole concept of accomplishing a goal is doing accomplishing something that you haven't accomplished before and you need to do the things you haven't done before. And probably most of the things that you haven't done before are things you don't want to do. And that's why you haven't done them before. So they're going to respect that when they see you going after it every single day. They're going to respect it when they see you, you know, rolling up your sleeves. They're going to respect you when you're being transparent and vulnerable, when you're you're sharing past failures and you un help them understand that failure is part of succeeding. When you're, if you, they're going to respect you when you're not only talking about how great you are. Actually, if you're talking about how great you are, they're not going to respect you at all very much. But if you're talking about being real about the, the, the challenges that you went through and overcame, the obstacles that you overcame, uh, the the uh, the challenges that you grew through, and the resiliency that you had to happen, and how you overcame the self doubt, and how you were coached and developed by somebody that helped you believe more when you had no belief at the moment when you were at your lowest point. They're going to respect you more when you're real with them. So being transparent and being a real authentic person and not trying to be some phony version there, they're going to respect that so much more third uh, part of it in order to be an effective leader and to be able to work through a situation like this is about clarifying expectations, having complete clarity on the expectations. Now, when you bring somebody, a new employee into a team, they're going to have expectations. They're going to have job responsibilities. You want to have uh, all those expectations of what the roles and responsibilities are. You also are going to, uh, in order to be successful here, we need to be able to quantify different measurable expectations of what average performance looks like, what good performance looks like, which, and it clarify to them this, that good is just above average. It's really not something to strive for being above average, because if we just all strive to be above average, it's not really anything special, right? We're not going to accomplish anything big have that expectation cl clarified properly so they know like, well, good's not really, good's just good, it's just getting by. And have the expectation just getting by is not that good enough. <laughs> you know, like that's not what we're here to do. Um, do you just want like good enough job? Do you want to be just good enough, like known in the world at the end of the day? Hey, you are just good enough. There's plenty of people just trying to get by. Have the expectations that we're not just trying to get by here trying to make something big happen. I want you to accomplish all the goals, all the dreams that you have. That's my expectations. And so back to the results like that, hey, this is what remarkable expectations look like. Uh, this is what remarkable results look like in this metric. And that remarkable is not, re not often uh, accomplished. It's remarkable. It's the best of the best. Have that expectation so they understand that in order to be remarkable, man, you are going to have to be all in 100% unreasonably committed in order to accomplish remarkable. Because if you think you're going to coast into remarkable, well, then it ain't so remarkable after all, is it, right? Remarkable effort, remarkable energy in order to get remarkable results. And even if you have remarkable effort and remarkable energy, you're still not guaranteed remarkable results. And life is not fair. And that's just the way it goes. And like, have those expectations, uh, and also, you're going to have um, 
qualitative expectations in terms of quality of work, make sure that that's set and that's clear. And in addition to that, have expectations about what it looks like showing up in, uh, in an exceptional way in the organization. The expectations that, hey, we have an environment that we expect people to innovate in this environment. We expect people not to just sit back and wait, but to actually be thinking and doing and doing and thinking and, and learning how to think. Not being wait, uh, sitting around wait to be told what to think, or but we're going to learn how to think so we could all move faster together as a team, and we're going to add more value to not only the org- people in the organization, but we'll walk out of these doors at the end of every day, and because we're just becoming such better people, and we're learning that here professionally, we're going to be able to apply everything that we're learning how to do here and be able to apply that to our personal lives and be able to add more value to our families, our friends, and our community. And we're going to, and if and we're going to just add so much more value to everyone else because we're just learning how to really be problem solvers. We're learning how to innovate. We're getting so much confidence where our belief is higher. We're learning what's, what's possible. Anything is possible and that we can be a great example. And now everyone's looking at what I'm accomplishing and now that it's, it's inspiring them and they're so inspired and they're happy for me and the expectations that you're going to haters when you do all these great things. And you want to know what? You'll never have a hater that's accomplishing more than you are accomplishing. If you notice that, the people that hate on you are always doing less than you. Wonder why? Because if the people that are doing more than you don't have time to sit around and watch what you're doing and spectate on hate on what you're doing because they're too busy accomplishing amazing things. So this is really super important to have those clear expectations. And this is not like a one and done type of thing. It's uh, And also, you always be reassessing. Am I really setting clear expectations. How do I know if I'm setting clear expectations? You could just simply ask the people you lead, hey, are the expectations of what really great looks like uh, effectively communicated to you? Because I'm not confident they are, and I just want to make sure. You could just have that transparent question with someone that you're leading. So you want to perpetuate the expectations and have those conversations. When they're asking how they're doing, hey, how do you think you're doing? Let's just see, because you'll know if their what their feedback is on themselves is accurate and aligned with what you're going to provide them, then you'll know, okay, good, we're aligned on expectations because they said they're doing great, and that's what I was going to tell them. Well, this is great. You align with the expectations. Uh, fourth part here, building relationships. So in order to build a relationship, first of all, you got to be genuinely interested in learning about somebody, right? Uh, you have to be curious and you need to come from a place of heart and actually care about the people you lead. Like if you don't care about the people you lead, you just want to be successful. You want your company to do well. Well, then, and you just don't care about other people and you don't want to get to know them. Uh, you're not looking to invest the time for them to have the opportunity to get to learn more about you. Then you don't belong in leadership. It's just that plain and simple. And if you disagree, I'll agree to disagree, (laughs) but you have to be able to effectively develop relationships with the people that you lead and not on just a surface level. And a great starting point for that is number one, coming from a place of heart and being genuinely interested in the people that you lead. And what you do is you learn about them and a way to start learning about them is understanding their personal, professional, financial goals. And just knowing what their goals are in and by itself is not sufficient. That's not getting to know someone just because you know what their goal is. And I want to explain that. It, the first part is hearing what their goal is. But the most important part and the most transformational part is understanding what the goal means to somebody. Because behind the goal is the purpose and the meaning of it. And when you take the time to learn about them and discover the purpose and meaning of somebody's goal it is going to open up a complete gold mine of who they really are at the heart and the center of them. Because you're going to find out where that goal originates, or you're going to find out why that goal is important to them. You're going to learn how that will change their lives. You might learn how that's going to change someone they love, someone in their life that they love their life, like what it's going to do to change things. And when you start having that discussion and you start learning about that, it is just like opens up like a a whole opportunity for you to learn about them 
And it goes the other way too. When they ask questions, like be an open book, like share, like when they're like curious about you, share with you, share your goals when they ask, but don't lecture them. Don't just give them all this information that they're not generally interested in. Like ask them like, hey, what would you like to know about me that you don't already know that I can share with you? Because you want to give them the information that they really want. And if they don't, they, there's nothing at that time. Hey, you, if, I just want to let you know, I'll give you permission. If there's anything that you would like to know more about me, uh, at any point, I'm just letting you know that I would be more than happy to share it with you uh, and, and share it. Now, obviously, you're going to be, you want to be transparent. And there's obviously certain discretion with transparency where certain things might be off limits. But if you're putting everything off limits, you're never going to have a real great relationship with anybody in this world, right? And that goes with leading people as well. So once you establish these four key areas, you know, you, you're a visionary leader and a visionary leader is about being able to see the great potential in the person that you're leading. You've, you've earned a trust and respect, which is not an event. It doesn't happen just like that. And one day happens over time and you're going to earn a little bit at a, at a time. You build that up. You've done a great job of clarifying expectations. And that's also not just a one and done. That's something that's a constantly, go, you know, you're going over because sometimes expectations are going to increase as the person's abilities have increased and you've built a relationship, you've developed a relationship with the person in a relationship, same thing. It doesn't happen in a day. This is something that happens where a relationship strengthens over time and builds over time, one day at a time, like one conversation at a time, like one, um, one event at a time where we, uh, we, we, we suffered together. We, you know, we did this like team bonding. It was so hard and we all did it together and we were able to overcome it. Or, hey, we overcame this obstacle together. We won together. We lost together. These are all things that build relationships. And it is, it's not only about winning. It's about failing in a short run, but getting up every single time together as a team, together in a relationship and getting back up and going and going and going. So now we are established what the four key components are to be able to effectively move through this. So if you have a team member where you at face value think that, hey, they expect less of themselves than I expect of them, but you don't really know for sure. Never assume, right? So there's a critical question to ask. One is, um, are they truly, does this individual truly setting a lower bar for themselves than I am because they, because of broken beliefs, because of low confidence? Or two, maybe this is a defense mechanism. It's more of a default mode because of their fear of failure. And they're kind of defending failure right now. So you need to un understand that, right? So you need to work through that and have a great transformational conversation. But if you don't see a bigger, uh, a bigger version of them, you don't have a vision of their greatness. If you haven't earned their trust and respect... Uh, if you haven't clarified expectations effectively, communicated effectively, and if you don't have a, and don't have a relationship as also, this is going to be super challenging. So it's a prerequisite to be able to do this. So now how do I do this? Okay, how I'm going to do this, I'm going to have a, a, an open conversation and meaningful heart to heart, play, come from a place of heart conversation with the person, trying to understand what that experience is like in that moment where I'm giving some constructive uh, criticism, uh, some feedback about how to get better and what, what, like what their response is and what their experience is. And this is an opportunity to let them be heard. They need to be heard. This isn't a time for me just to come in here and just lecture. And a lot of us leaders, you know, we're high drivers. We just want to go, go, go. And it's really, uh, could be challenging, but we want to be able to let them be heard and like, let's hear it. And then we want to report back what we're hearing and really identify it and then get at the root of what it really is. Is it that they're just, they're low, they're, they're low confidence and now they're uh, having, they just have a low bar or a lot of times it's going to be that they simply look, they're great and they just, they're afraid to fail. And now whatever it is, okay, now I need to be relatable, talk about, okay, how I've been there because I've been in both places at different times in my life. Pick that, whatever it is, identify it, make sure that I'm hearing them accurately and once I did, I need to be able to relate to them and I need to inspire them. And how do how am I inspiring them through that challenge? And this is not about like right or wrong. This is just about life. 
And this is about like where somebody is at a particular moment in life in their growth cycle and about helping them break through and get into the next level. And it could be the one of the biggest obstacles to them accomplishing some of their biggest goals in their life. And that's what it's about at that moment. And if you, as long as you have someone that's open-minded, they got a growth mindset and you, and I'm, let's assume that you've bring team members in, they got growth mindsets. They're really, they're truly are motivated. They really want to accomplish their goals. You do this effectively and you have all this built in these prerequisites of, of, of effectively leading this situation already established and you come from a place of no emotion because you just only emotion is you just really care and you want to help them win and you feel responsible for leading them the uh, inspiring them and effectively coaching and developing them it's going to work out and it's okay to have like these tension moments from time to time with people when you're coaching and developing people because the the highest performing relationships with coach and player in sports probably have the most tension moments because the stakes are so high and because they're so invested and they want it so bad. But don't be the one that brings that. Be the one that like, okay, what guides you through that? Because you know that everything's going to be great at the end of the day, as long as that person's fully committed to their goals. So, hey, guys, I just wanted to share a little bit about what it looks like when you're, uh, you know, maybe you're struggling and you provide someone feedback and you're getting some resistance and you're wondering, well, are they, do they, are they expecting less of themselves than I'm expecting of them? Uh, and hey, this is how you uh, can make sure that when those situations happen, that you are going to be able to effectively work through that as a team uh, with the people that you lead, because uh, that's super important. And um, you know, don't just ever take that at face value, because sooner or later, as you, when you're coaching and developing somebody, when they get through a break point where they're about to like grow, they're gonna this this these situations happen. It gets tough. And some people, you're going to have this resistance. And it doesn't mean, it could be one of a couple things. And when you get to the root of it, that's where the development is. And now I understand what it is. And then we're going to develop that. Not develop this like, okay, we had some awkward conversation where, you know, you resisted some like, you know, me pushing you in a positive way. Uh, and that that's not the real thing. The real thing is like, what's going on here? And important is as a leader, you need to like reflect back on all these conversations you're ha having. Okay, how did I handle that conversation? What could I have done better? Do I, am I setting clear expectations clearly? I am I earning their trust and respect? Make sure that I have this self awareness and reflect back on it. And you need to always be working on yourself. You cannot just make it about the person person you're leading. Be the only one responsible for getting better. And if whoever your mentor is and whoever's leading you. What you need to do is share this experience with them. Tell them about what you felt, what went well, and what you felt the, felt are the opportunities are for you to lead more effectively. And then ask for their feedback and get coached on that. Because if you don't do it and you're not the example of getting coached and developed, then how can you have other people follow you to get coached and developed? So for me, I never stop getting coached and developed. I'm always taking these opportunities to the people who can definitely affect, uh, effectively lead and coach and develop me. So, hey guys, I'd love to hear your comments, questions about this particular topic and looking forward for any other suggestions of other leadership topics so that I can help you guys more effectively lead, improve your quality of life when leading because that could be really challenging at times, but most importantly, so that you can coach and more effectively coach and develop the incredible people that you're leading in your teams and your organizations. We'll see you on the next episode of Steve Lags Unfiltered. That's all for today's Steve Lags Unfiltered Journey. Subscribe, rate, and leave a review to fuel your success journey. Also, be sure to listen to us on your favorite podcast channel or outlet. Stay tuned, stay unfiltered, and we'll catch you on the flip side.